This is Dr. Nathan Knox, and I am coming to you just to introduce the revival of the remnant. We have experienced a, a pandemic, and some of us have experienced personal pandemics. However, we've seen the guards change. And so God is raising up new voices to preach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to present this as a moment in black history of these people because we stand on the shoulders of the preachers that have paved the way. And some of them have gone on, but God's word will never change. His word will never die. And so God has raised up new voices of this generation to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I want to present them. They are great people of God. And I want you guys to support them. Go on their social media. Utilize their cash app. Go wherever you need them. Find them. They are available just for you uh, because they're new voices in the kingdom of God. Again, we say praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, we have a great, two great men of God that's going to come to you and preach the infallible and incorruptible word of God. That is Minister Christian Maxwell. Minister Christian Maxwell is a musician. He's a psalmist. He is a God-given talent. And I want you to welcome him. Also, utilize his cash out. Let's be a blessing to him as he comes. He's a young man that is striving for what God has for him in his life. And let's encourage him. Go to his Facebook, his Instagram, or look at that. That information is below. Let's support this man of God and let's receive him as he comes. Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I know you ain't tired. We can't get tired of the Holy Ghost. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. First of all, I give all praises and honor to God, to Elder Nathan Knox. I love you and I honor you, and I'm so grateful to have been asked to share the pulpit with such honorable uh, men and women of God. Um, I won't be before you long. I got like a little seven-minute Sunday school lesson. Y'all gonna roll with me? Okay, let's work this real fast. Um, if you got your Bibles, if you got your phone, go to Acts of the Apostles, the 19th chapter. Uh, verses 1 through 6 forgive me I know you know some pastors taught y'all to only read like one verse and three but I'm a lover of the word so I read as many as the Lord says okay all right um, let's start at verse 1 and it says and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples he said unto them have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed and they said unto him we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost and he said unto them unto what then were ye baptized and they said we were baptized unto John's baptism and Paul said to them John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, and that is on Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were baptized in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Verse 6, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. If I were to put a title on this, I would just say the Holy Ghost power. Look at somebody, I know you got your mask, but look at them real good and say the Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power, let's work this. Here in Acts 19, we see uh, the Apostle Paul in Ephesus. Paul finds uh, 12 disciples. The, the, these Ephesian disciples reveal to Paul uh, that they have very little knowledge of God's nature as revealed in Jesus. And so catch this. They knew enough to be saved, but they did not know enough to be filled. I want to say that we are living in a time where people are being saved without power. And people are believing in him without power. Acts, Acts 1 and 8 says, But ye shall receive 
power. I ain't got no Bible church in here. I said we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power. Power. Shout power. Something Jesus died for us to have that the church lacks right now is power. Holy Ghost power. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is the doorway to that power. And, and, and we live in an age where the church has lost its desire for the power of God. And we replace power with gifts and talents. And we replace power with cameras and lights. And we replace power even with the dancing. And we've dancing without power, shouting with no victory, preaching and ain't got no power, prophesying and ain't got no power, praying and ain't got no power. Where is the Holy Ghost? Many Christians today believe but have not been filled. I said that. Many Christians today believe in him, but they have not been filled with him. See, see, see many of you are, are calling on the name of Jesus and have no clue who he is. We, we do the call to Christ, the, the let you come by letter of Christian experience. And some of you went down in Jesus' name, came up speaking with tongues, and still didn't learn how to apologize to folk you heard in English. Many of us ain't got the Holy Ghost. Just a form of godliness and the power is totally denied. I, 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 but the helper whom the Father will send in my name. This is what Jesus said. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance the things that I have said to you. We have to understand we must be filled. I'm not saying everybody has to walk around speaking in tongues. But I am saying that we need to be filled. See, th this kind goeth out only by prayer and by fasting. We can't always be satisfied with the feeling. I wish you had a church here. I wish somebody would tell somebody the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. I said the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. Hear me. Feeling him and being filled with him are not the same thing. The Holy Ghost is not a feeling. He is the Holy Ghost. And he is the Spirit of God. He is the paraclete. He is the advocate, the counselor, the teacher, the creator, the helper, the comforter. That is the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost, the one that teaches you how to love your enemies. We need the Holy Ghost. That's in Luke 6 and Matthew 5, the one that says, bless those who curse you and do good to them that despitefully use you and persecute you. We need the Holy Ghost to teach us the difference, watch this, between being discreet from being deceptive. Saints, we need the Holy Ghost. I said we need the Holy Ghost. I want to teach, but I felt a preach right there. I wish somebody would thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come on, clap your hands real fast and thank him for the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't want to have church. I said thank him for the Holy Ghost. Come on, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I said thank him for the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands right there. Thank him for the Holy Ghost. Thank him for the Holy Ghost. I wish you would throw your hands up and holler. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. You need to be healed. Let somebody say, I want it, I want it. Yeah, some of you need to be healed. You, you have to make decisions. Some of you, uh, you, there's some decisions you have to make. And you need the Holy Ghost to help you choose what you've been trying not to choose. There's, there's a, a, a people that the Lord is doing his next move with. He's only doing it with the people that are going to chase after him. I'll say it again. The next move that the Lord does, he's going to do it through a people that want to be filled. Not that want to be seen. Not that want a microphone. Watch me. Because all y'all ain't called to the pulpit. Is this my camera? This is what I'm looking at? All of y'all ain't called to the church house. All of Some of y'all are called to be in business. Some of y'all are called to be doctors and scientists and teachers. Everybody ain't called to sit up here. But if you are called to be up here, I think you need to be filled. I'm done. Don't push me. I'm through. I'm through. As I close, 
I want to leave the church with something to think about. In 2 Chronicles 5, verse 13, the Bible says, in unison, I live for when the church gets to this point. In unison, when the trumpeters and singers were to make themselves heard with one voice, praising and thanking the Lord, they raised their voices accompanied by the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments of music. They praised the Lord saying, here's your shout, for the Lord is good. His mercy and his loving kindness endures forever. This is the point. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. The church today is a church without a cloud. Verse 14, so that the priests could not even remain standing to minister. Not because of the singing. The Bible says because of the cloud. Watch this. This is the last verse. For the glory and brilliance of the Lord filled the house of God. In conclude, we say as the body of Christ, we want to see the lives of men, women, children, and families change. I say that the solution is in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands and give God praise. <laughs> Greetings in Jesus' name. Listen, we have another man of God that's coming. He's powerful. He is, he is my cousin. And when I tell you we work radio together on your gospel connection, and he's a great man of God. He's a praise and worship leader. He has a heart for God. And I want us to welcome Minister Dwayne Jones of the Acme Baptist Church, where he serves as one of the millennial pastors. Let's receive him as he comes. Please go to his Go to his social media outlets and encourage him and go to his cash app and sow a seed into his life as he break down the word of God for the people of God. God bless. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. We honor God today. Amen. To my bishop, Bishop Sutton. Amen. To my cousin, Elder Knox. Amen. Who's doing a wonderful work and we thank God for him and appreciate him. Him for this opportunity. Amen. Amen. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord. To show someone the way And enable me to say My soul reaches into And I am available to Amen. Let's get into the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to start at verse 5. Okay. Amen. And Simon answered, saying unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net and when they had and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break amen this is a we're going to stop there. This is a very, very familiar passage of scripture, and there's so much in it, but I want to concentrate on five and six. Amen. Amen. If I was to give this a subject, it would be, my next move is about to change the rest of my life. 
Can I say that one more time? My next Sato Shaya move is about to change. It's about to change my entire life. One more time. My next move is about to change my entire life. Oh, we take God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Luke is the fifth chapter. Amen. This traditional view is the gospel of Luke and Acts were written by the physician Luke. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. This chapter relates to the recruitment of Jesus teaching and healing ministry. I'm old school. I use paper. Amen. He wrote his gospel under Paul's direction. Luke wrote the book of Acts as a sequel to the gospel of Luke. Amen. Luke had access to all the historical records. He carefully researched and interviewed the disciples and others who were eyewitnesses to the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. In this text, and I'm, I'm almost done. In this text, we're going to have to do three things. Amen. This next move of God, we're going to have to do three things. I'm really talking to my generation. We're going to have to listen and shut our big mouths. We're going to have to move and we're going to have to obey. Amen. We're going to have to listen and shut our big mouths. I know you went to school. I know you have a master's degree, but you don't know more than the Lord. We're going to have to move. We're going to have to obey and we're going to have to follow. One more time. We're going to have to listen, move, obey, and follow. Amen. Amen. Obedience. We are, we're going to have to be obedient to what the Lord is telling us to do. This next move of God is going to cause us to be obedient to what God is telling us to do. We have to pay close attention to what God is saying. Amen. Peter had been fishing all night. Amen. And if I was to go back to Shire, I'm going to take that from you. If I was to go back in the top, I would say, um, this is what happens when you let Jesus borrow your boat. But I don't want to talk about that today. Amen. 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 Peter had been fishing all night long and he didn't catch anything. So when Jesus spoke to him, he told him, we've been fishing all night, Jesus, and I didn't catch nothing. I didn't catch anything, but nevertheless, you got to get a nevertheless in your spirit. I'll do what you say do, amen. Nevertheless, if you tell me to go to the highest mountain, I'll do it. It don't make sense to me, but because you said it, I got to do what you told me to do. Nevertheless, I'll do what you say. We have to get a nevertheless in our spirit. Glory be to God. We got to get it down in our spirit. Nevertheless, yes, I will. It's not fair. Nevertheless, no, I didn't get the 20K. It ain't fair. But nevertheless, he's a provider. Nevertheless, we got to get a nevertheless in our spirit. It's looking rough. Nevertheless, I'll take him at his word. I want to give up. Nevertheless, I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. God, I trust you. God, my life is in your hands. Nevertheless, 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 nevertheless. When God, when God gives us instructions, it is important that we follow him because God has a plan. For I know the thoughts of you, hallelujah, to hallelujah to bring you to an expected end. This next move of God is going to cause us to stretch ourselves. Oh my God, we're going to have to stretch ourselves. 
launch out. Uh, we're going to have to go a little farther. We're going to have to turn down the plate. Hallelujah. We're going to have to get off of social media. Hallelujah. We're going to have to put our phone on do not disturb. Hallelujah. This next move of God, uh, we're going to have to stretch ourselves a little bit and launch into the deep. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to do some work. We are some lazy people. We want a quick fix. But you're going to have to do some work in this next season. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says faith without works is dead. You're going to have to move and do some work in this next season. My next move, I must obey. I got to obey the voice of the Lord. This next move, you will have to listen and obey. Your next miracle is based on your obedience. Your next miracle is based on your obedience. Peter could have said to Jesus, you are a carpenter. You don't know about fishing. That's what we do. You're not that smart. I went to school. I'm still paying off the student loans. You can't tell me what to do. That doesn't make sense. Peter could have said that, but he did. He said, Lord, I've been working all night. But if you told me to do it, I'm going to trust you and I will do it. Peter could have been all made all kind of excuses. Amen. But he did. My next move, I must work. Glory to God. Jesus told Peter to go fishing after they had been laboring all night and all day. And they caught nothing. This meant Peter had to load this big, heavy, wet net back into the water. Because he had cleaned it. Amen. He had to load it back into the water. Amen. Amen and go out fishing after he had fished all night. I'm sure he was very tired. I'm sure he wanted to give up. I'm sure he wanted to throw in the towel. But obedience pays off. Yes, obedience pays off. This next move, I will have to put in the work. Glory be to God. This next move, I'm going to have to go a little deeper. Hallelujah. This next move, I'm going to have to trust him a little more. This next move will cause everything attached to me to win. This next move of God, if I'm obedient, will cause everybody around me to win. Why do you say that, Dwayne? Why do you say that? Because this next move, when he obeyed God and put his neck, he caught so much fish. Hallelujah. He had to call his neighbors. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's so much. It's so much. It's so much. Come here. You get some of this fish. Come here. This next move will cause everybody around you to reap in your blessings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody attached to me will win in this next move of God. Everybody that sold it to me will win. Everybody that believed in me will win. This next move in my life is going to cause me to live in an abundance. This next move will change my whole life. Come on, clap your hands and give up, please. As I go to my seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone that stayed with you, everyone that encouraged you, everyone that sold into you will win this next move. You're going to have to obey. You're going to have to move. And you're going to have to do some work. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise.